Hi again. Here we are looking at some JavaScript. Um, this will continue the shopping cart tutorial. And in the last tutorial, we we you know defined an array to hold shopping cart items, and then we defined an object to represent a you know shopping cart item in the cart. Um, and then what we did is we looked at you know some of the ideas for functions that our shopping cart might want to execute. So in the next few videos, what I'd like to do is I'd like to, you know, create these functions and test them. And that's a key factor or a key step in creating this kind of stuff with JavaScript is you want to, you want to, you know, make a function or, you know, create a system and then test it, right? Because you want to be sure that it works, right? And you want to see how it's working. And then, you know, that'll give you a lot of ideas. It'll say like, hey, you know, will I be able to use this in my project? Or, you know, where could this fail? Or, you know, it'll predict problems that might come up later that, you know, you don't want to have when you're working with with a client. You know, you'd, you'd rather cover, you know, these accidents before, you know, your client sees them, right? So let's start with this add item to cart, okay? So let's define this here as a function. And it'll have these parameters, name, price, and count. And this function's job is to create a new item and add it to the cart. So, uh, you know, when we call on the function here, it will receive three parameters, name, price, and count. Okay? And so what we'll do is we'll say uh, we'll make a new item. Right? I'm going to use lowercase item, like lowercase i here. And we'll create a new item, right? This is uppercase item, right? So these are two different things here, okay? And item takes three parameters, name, price, and count. So, you know, we can actually just put name, price, and count right here. And then now that we've created an item, we can add it to the cart. So we can do cart.push item. Okay, and so that should add a new item to the cart. Let's give it a test. So how are we going to test this? At this stage, probably the best place to test is the console. Okay, and actually the console is really like a great place to test for most everything. Um, you know, some things for you know, like user interface stuff, you'll want to actually test in the browser and see it functioning in the browser. Um, but for this stuff, we don't even have a user interface yet. We just have, you know, this system running behind the scenes, and we just want to see that it's working. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, you know, um, let, let's add a new item to the cart, and then we'll console log our item. So maybe we'll make a new item. We'll call it an apple. We'll give it a price of $1.22, and then we'll put one of them in the cart. Okay. And then we'll say, you know, just for testing, we'll say, you know, console log and, uh, and then we'll log the cart. Okay. And, you know, we can do a few things with this. Maybe we want to do cart.length to just see how many items are in the cart. Um, you know, if I do cart like this, it'll print the whole cart out. So it'll just show the brackets and probably say object, you know, inside, right? But, you know, if we have one object in there and we've added one object here, then it's it's probably working, right? So uh, let's test it out. So here we are. We'll refresh our cart. Oh, look, it says one item in cart. And if I open this up, I can see it's an item. It's got length one. Item at, you know, item at, at index zero is an apple with a price of 122. So I, I think this is working, right? Um, so that's okay. And now we have to start predicting problems. Like, you know, what if, you know, what if we added another item to the cart? Like I added, you know, um, a pair to the cart, and it was like, I don't know why pairs are always more expensive, but let's say it's a dollar seventy-two, and maybe I'll put three of them in my cart, right? And then we'll we'll test it again. And now I got two items in the cart, and there's item number one, item number two. And the item number two is a pair, and there's th three count, right? So that's working pretty good. Um, let's say we're shopping, and you know, um, and you know, we we got some apples, but now that we've got three pairs, we think, you know what? I probably need another apple, right? So, what if I add another apple here, right? What's going to happen? So uh, let's take a look. Oh yeah, let's go to Chrome here, and I'll refresh. Oh, now I've got a cart and it's got three items in it. 
right? But actually, you know, item number one is an apple and item number three is also an apple. They're really the same product, right? So that's kind of a problem, right? So uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make sure that, you know, if I add an item that has the same name as another item, instead of creating a new item in the cart, what we'll do is we'll up the count of the existing item, okay? Because they should be the same thing. Now, you know, if we were doing this at an industrial level, you know, with, uh, you know, really you know, super giant websites like Amazon or something, you know, they they might run into a situation where you have, you know, products that have the same name. So they need a like a more precise way to identify project products. So what they would probably do is they would probably also give every product an ID and maybe some other features. You know, like imagine if you're buying books, you know, you could have two books with the same title, right? But every book has a unique ISBN number. So, you know, we could also include the ISBN number here as in our item, and then we could pass it along to item in cart. And that way, when we added that new product, you know, um, we could match it against the ISBN number, and we'd know that that was unique. Um, for this example, I'm going to keep it simple and assume that every product has a unique name, okay? So how do we do that? You know, if I have this, this um, add to cart, you know, function here, you know, if I'm going to add a new item, how can I be sure that that item doesn't already exist, right? So what we're going to do, it, you could do this a couple ways. Um, I'm going to just do this way here. I'm going to say, let's, let's, oh wait, I did if, let's do four, right? <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to loop through the array and then match the name here against the name of each item in the array. Okay, so actually, let's let's do before we do that. Let's do one more step here. Um, I got a little ahead of myself, so you know I'm logging the cart here. But what if I wanted to you know get at one of the items in the cart? You know, remember our cart items are in um, you know in an array. So so if I want to get the first item in the cart, I can say cart bracket zero, right? Okay, maybe I'll. I'll, yeah, I'll just leave that one there, I guess, right? So this it's the second item we're going to be looking at. Okay, so if I say cart item zero, what happens? Okay, so here is the cart, and then here's item zero, right? So it's it's the apple, right? And it's an item object. Okay, so that gets me to the item. But remember, that object has a bunch of properties. And so at this stage, when we get to here, we can say dot and then access one of the properties of that object. So if I want to get to the name, this will give me the name, right? Let's actually, maybe we'll, we'll write it like this. You know, how about this? So that way we can show it in stages, right? So I've got cart, cart item zero, cart item zero dot name, okay? So uh, let's take a look at that here. Oh, it says apple, right? So the cart is a, is a um, you know an array of of three item objects. The element at index zero is an item object that has a name of apple and price of twenty two and count of one, and then the item or the item object at index zero dot name property is apple, and we get the value here, right? Okay, so uh, so let's apply that here, right? So what I'd like to do is inside my add to cart function is I'm going to say for variable i in cart, right? So now we're going to loop through the cart. And what I want to do is I want to look for an item that has the same name, right? So what we'll do is we'll say, um, you know, cart bracket zero dot name and that'll give us the name but let's let's use an if statement here to to check this right so what we'll do is we'll say you know if and then I'll put the parentheses here and the curly brackets right so if cart you know um, item zero or actually not item zero item I there we go right cart bracket I so that's each item in the cart is going to be you know here and then we're going to get the name of each item. And then we'll use the double or even the triple equal sign to match it 
against the name uh, you know, argument that we passed in. And if they're equal, then we're going to do the code inside the code block here. Okay? So here we're going to loop through every item in the cart. We're going to look at each item individually, look at the name property, and match it against the name here. And if they match, then we'll increase the count of that item. So we can access the count of that item in the same way. Cart I dot count, right, to get to the count. And then I'll just use plus plus to increment by one, okay? Um, and then, you know, if we found that item, there should only be one item with this name, right? All of our items should be unique. So maybe at that point, we, we want to stop looping so we can put break in here. This says like, hey, you know, quit looping right there, okay? And, uh, you know, if we don't find any of these items, then we'll add a new item to the cart, right? So this um, this break is actually gonna gonna break the loop, and then we in in this case we would add the item to the cart. But actually, I don't want to do this, so I'm going to um, actually let's instead of break, let's do return here. Maybe that'd be better, right? So uh, so we got four var i in cart, you know if cart bracket i dot name equals name they match in that case we found that item in the cart let's say cart dot count plus plus that adds one and then we have you know we've increased the count of that item in the cart and then we'll return and this will end our function right here and break the loop if we wanted to just break the loop we could use break there right then I was realizing, actually, you know, then we'd end up doing this code down here, right? And, you know, we do want to do this code down here only if we don't find the item in the cart. Okay, so if we loop through everybody and we don't find this thing, then we'll end up down here and we'll create a new, a new item. Let's give it a try. So, uh, so I'll save that and then we'll, uh, we'll go back to, to the uh, console here and I'll refresh. And now you can see I've got, you know, only two items in my cart, but the apple actually shows up twice, right? Um, and so if I look here, you can see, you know, I've, I've, um, you know, I've, I've added a new item, and, and here I've added one apple, and here I've added another apple, but the apple shows up twice because we've got two of them now. Now, since we're including the count here, I did plus plus, but, you know, if we're including count, then we might want to look at that and say, like, well, actually, you know, if we're adding a certain number of items to the cart, maybe we don't want to do, you know, plus one here. Maybe we want to do um, plus count, right? So this means, you know, add count to whatever the value of count property here is, okay? So let's give that a test. So here, we now we need a test to make sure that this thing is going to work, right? So, so far... You know, it does make sure that we don't duplicate the apple, and it did increase the number of apples by one, but what if we added, you know, three more apples like this, right? So in this case, when we're done, we should have two items in the cart, apple and a pear, right? Because that's the only two kinds of items we added, but when we you know, have the total of apples, it should show one, two, three, four, five, right? So it should show five apples and three pears. Let's give it a test. We'll go back to Chrome here and I'll refresh. Oh, look, so there's five apples, so that's correct. And then if I open this up, we can even look at the, at the, uh, the pears here and we can see that there's three, right? So, so that seems to be working, right? So uh, why don't we call that... Uh, complete there for this function. We might want to go back and revisit this and do a little more retooling, but at least we've got a simple function that's doing what we expect it to do, and we, we've tested it to some degree, so we know that it's kind of behaving the way that we expect, right? And so we can move on and maybe work on some of these other functions in the next video, okay? Um, and then sooner or later we'll have to move it all into the web too, and we'll do that, um, you know, make it show up on the page later, but right now we just want to make sure that our, our functions are all operating the way we expect, right? Okay, so thanks for watching.